Hey guys, Mr. Gron, Chapter 9 Guided Notes. Uh, now one thing with Chapter 9, we start out with 9.1, multiple representations of functions. That's not really conducive to just going over some quick guided notes. So take a look back at 9.1 and look at uh, how do you tell when you're using a, um, a verbal representation of a function, an equation, a graph, and a table, and the relationship between those three things. That could be its own 10 minute video here and I want to keep things kind of tight for you guys. Okay, so piecewise functions, uh, this is a nice, a nice one to do in something like this. So just a reminder of how to do that. This is what these look like. It's usually three equations. It could be as many as 100. It could be as few as two, but it's, it's usually three. And then each equation has its own uh, inequality. So as a reminder, the inequality tells you which equation to choose and then you plug into the equation that's next to it. So this part right here, this tells you which to choose. So for example, uh, we'll go through a few quick ones here. If we were going to do f of, we'll say, negative 4, I would first take that negative 4 and I'd look at the inequalities and say, where does negative 4 fit? Negative 4 is not greater than 2. It's not between negative 3 and 2. It's less than negative 3. And so in that case, I would plug in negative 4 into the top equation and do negative 4 squared, which is 16, right? Uh, if another one, let's say we're going to do uh, f of, we'll say, we'll say negative 3, right? So a little reminder, the less than or equal to versus the less than sign, um, if it's got the equal to sign, that's where I would choose negative 3. I wouldn't choose this one because it doesn't have the little equal sign underneath it, right? If it's right on the border between two, it's got to be one or the other. It can't be both. And this is what tells you when it's right on the border which one to choose. So this would be another one where I would choose the top equation. And you're only plugging it into the equation once. You're only plugging it into one of these. We're not plugging it into all three and checking the, that next. That's not how these work. All right, so then if I've got, let's say, f of 0, again, which inequality does it fit in? Doesn't fit in this one, doesn't fit in this one. It's right here. It's between negative 3 and, uh, and positive 2. So I would plug in here. So 0 plus 1, and that's 1. And then let's say f of 9, for instance. This is another one where students sometimes get confused. They can figure out, OK, 9 is greater than 2, so I'm going to pick the bottom equation. But this equation is just 5. What do I do with that? Well, that's the one that's so simple that you sometimes overthink it, because the answer is just 5. The answer is just this. If there's no x there, you can't change that number by plugging something into it to multiply or add or whatever. OK, so the next thing that I'm going to cover here are rules for transformations. Now you might, you should have all of this in your notes, and so it might be worth it just to, you know, just to take that page and cut it out or just kind of earmark it or something. But our rules for transformations are as follows. So one of the, the first thing would be shifts, not shifts, shifts, or translations. Uh, this is when you are adding or subtracting. So if you're seeing pluses and minuses, that is going to be a shift of some sort. The rules are if you are adding or doing whatever on the outside of the grouping symbol, that is a vertical visitor because it's outside of the home, so it's visiting. If it's on the inside of the grouping symbol that's inside the home, that's a horizontal homing, right? So these are our two options. If we're adding on the outside, so that's our vertical shift. This is our horizontal. Um, our rules are as follows. If k is greater than... Um, uh, Sorry, if it's plus k, so if, I guess if k is greater than 0, then this is shifting up. 
And if it's minus k, this is shifting down. With our horizontal, things are a little bit goofy because if we're adding h, now we are shifting. You would think it's shifting to the right, but it's actually shifting to the left. And if we're subtracting h, it is shifting to the right. All right, so quick examples of what that would look like. Let's say I had something like x squared plus 3. So I've got f of x equals x squared is my, um, is my parent uh, equation for this. x squared plus 3, that is going to be a shift of up 3. If instead I had x plus 3 in parentheses squared, now this is a shift of left 3. All right, so the next one that we did were stretches. Stretches or compressions. This is if you are multiplying. And now the same basic rules apply for vertical versus horizontal. If we are multiplying on the outside of the parentheses and the outside of the grouping symbol, that is going to be a vertical stretch. Now our rules get a little more complicated than this, but not too bad. Um, if a is greater than 1, it is a stretch. But if a is between 1 and 0, so it's greater than 0, but it's less than 1. So numbers like 1 half, 0.4, stuff like that, that is a compression. With our horizontals, now it is f of, we call, say it's b times x, and it's on the inside of the grouping symbol. Our rules are as follows. If b is greater than 1, it is a compression of 1 over b, so the reciprocal of b. If instead b is between 0 and 1, that is a stretch of 1 over b, of the reciprocal. So a little more complicated with that one. That's the one that students struggle with the most. Uh, so now let's say we're talking about, we'll say g of x is equal to the square root of x, right? Another common parent function for this. If I did something like 3 times the square root of x, where 3 is on the outside of the square root symbol, that is a vertical stretch of 3. If instead it's on the inside, so now it's in the home, it's a horizontal homey, this is horizontal, and 3 is greater than 1, so we're following this rule, it's a horizontal compression of 1 third. All right, then the last one is the easy one, uh, reflections. So vertical, it is if the minus is on the outside. So this is like times a negative 1, I guess would be. That looks like an x minus 1. What I meant to say is malt by negative 1. So basically, if you see a negative symbol, right? And it's not a subtraction. Horizontal, that would be if it is on the inside. Now, oftentimes, this is a combo platter where it's a reflection and a stretch or compression, so you have to be careful there. All right, so in this case, let's say we had something like, um, we'll say h of x. We'll keep some examples over here. So we'll say h of x is equal to, oh, we did squared, we did that. I guess we'll do squared again, right? Well, maybe we'll do cubed just to mix it up. So now if I do negative x cubed where there's no parentheses, right, this is going to be um, a vertical reflection. However, if I do negative x on the inside like this, that is going to be a horizontal reflection. 
All right, hopefully that was helpful. Um, again, take a look at the review materials and uh, I'm gonna have a couple more of these videos.